Hello, and welcome back to Budget Astro. This is Cody Brown. It's finally a clear night out guide. So, finally, I want to get to the second part of the Ioptron 3200 Smart EQ Pro. How to set it up, how to use it, and my overall process on shooting deep sky objects. Let's get started. Alright, now that I got everything outside set out here, now I can go ahead and explain to you guys everything that I have here. So first, we have the telescope. It's an Astrotech AT70ED. It has apochromatic glass, which means less chromatic aberrations. On the side of it is my guide scope and camera. It's a William Optics 32mm guide scope with a ZWO ASI 120 MMS guide camera. It is a monochrome camera, super cheap, really good at guiding. And then the mount, the one that you guys came to see set up and working, that is the IOPTRON 3200 Smart EQ Pro. And then I have my computer here set up. Not necessary to run it, I like using it. I'll show you guys about it, but I'll also tell you guys how to not use it as well. Next, let's move on to setting up the wiring. But wait one second. If you're not using anything but just the mount itself and the camera, and you're planning on using a um, auto trigger um, intervalometer or anything like that, or in camera self timer you can skip this wiring setup it's not necessary for you to pay attention to this the first wire that I want to set up is the power wire for the IOPTRON 3200 I like using it with an AC adapter it also can be battery powered I personally don't like doing that because I like the reliability of AC power so I went ahead and bought an AC power adapter right here, have it plugged into my power strip. The second wire that I set up is my guide ca camera cable going from the guide camera into the port to the mount. Third wire that I have set up is coming from the remote right here and this is going to plug into the side of my computer there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to get this mount set up with a computer. It just requires a couple drivers and the proper, I think it's an RC32. I'll correct it up here on the screen. But yeah, this plugs right into the side of the computer. And that's set up. third wire that I'm running, I think that's third or fourth I think, um, is from my camera to an AC power adapter, excuse the car in the background, so yes I run my camera on a power adapter, you can find these on Amazon, this one was $15, it allows me to run this camera all night without having to worry about batteries. The next cable that I'm going to be setting up is the USB cable from my camera to my computer since I'm running Nina's um, nighttime imaging and astronomy software for image acquisition. Plugs directly into the USB. On the side of the camera. And directly into the computer. And last cable that I have to set up is my guide camera cable. This one right here, a little kind of hard to see. Guaranteed it's not in focus. 
little blue cable end and USB C cable end. This is how we get the images from the guide camera into the computer. Pretty obvious, pretty self explanatory. All right, now we're done with wiring. Let's pull our line, focus, and get imaging. Polar alignment is pretty straightforward. The first thing I've done is turn my telescope to the side to allow me easy access to the polar alignment scope, which is located right here. In order to turn the scope without messing with anything, this little thumb screw right here, I've loosened and allows me to easily pivot this. And then I just tighten it back down. Next thing I want to do is go grab my remote, press menu, go down to alignment, and the top section it says pull star position. I'm going to click that and it's going to show this clock right here. Where the hand is, is exactly where you're going to want Polaris to be at in the little dial inside this uh, polar scope. If I can find one, I will have an image up on the screen right now showing you what it will look like through this polar scope with Polaris inside the, uh, the rings. So I'm going to go ahead and pull our line right now. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says it's at about 7 o'clock. So I'm going to get down here without putting any pressure on the tripod itself. I'm going to look right through the polar scope. Actually, I'm pretty close to Polaris already, just with my rough uh, positioning of the tripod here. And what I'm going to do is I've calibrated it left to right. I'm going to use my hand here on this bar and just push up until I get it in the inner ring right at about seven o'clock. I have it almost perfect. I'm gonna tighten that down. It moved Polaris up a little bit. I'm just gonna pull it back down. And now I'm right on it. At this point, when you're polar aligned, do your best to not bump your mount. If you bump your mount, you have unpolar aligned yourself and you will have to start that process all over again. And get back up. Turn the telescope straight forward, lock that in place. On my remote, I'm going to hit back, 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 out to zero position. Now, polar lining must be done at zero position, so that way you can see out the front here through the polar scope towards Polaris. So the next thing, if you're Using a um, just the hand controller, at this point you're going to want to focus your camera and then do a one, two, or three star alignment. I can run you guys through that real quick to show you guys how to, to do the one star alignment. Let's get started with that. Okay, to do a one star alignment which basically a two star alignment would be following the same process after finishing the first star and moving on to another star. There goes my camera turning off live view after I just done doing a uh, rough focus. So to do a one star alignment, you're gonna press menu, go down to alignment. Second option is one star alignment. Now, here you will see the first star that pops up, whatever it might be. It changes via the time of the year and the location you're in. But you can scroll through. I think we'll align on Beetlejuice since tonight I'm going to be focusing in that region. So once you've scrolled down, find a star that you know in the sky and that is clearly visible from where you're at. Go ahead and press enter, and I'll automatically start moving to that star. Now, once it's done moving, do not be surprised if 
where it's pointing at in the sky right now is nowhere near the star that you're looking for. In my case, it's pointing directly at my neighbor's house. Not a good thing. <laughs> so, what you wanna do is you have these four buttons right here. I'm gonna press the number nine to get it to move at its fastest pace. And I'm gonna get down and just make sure that the telescope is pointing in the direction of the star that I'm looking for. Which I'm just about on it. I'm gonna turn on the live view on the camera, slow down the movement of the telescope. And this is why you need your camera on the telescope focused before you do these. turns off. That's fine. I'll just turn it back on. And I actually have that star perfectly aligned. It's a little bit off. press enter and we're done it's that easy to do a one star alignment and once it's aligned you can take and go to menu select and slew and through here there's a number of different options uh, like tonight I'd be shooting um, the Orion Nebula so I would go down to Messier catalog and knowing that that's M42, type that into there, click enter, and it'll automatically go to it with minimal error, but there is a chance for some error. Alright, let's continue on. Alright, so... Over the past couple months since I made the first video, I've gotten just a slight bit more advanced in my process and my workflow. I no longer don't guide. I now use what's called a batten off mask. I have one right here. I had my friend 3D print it. It's got this little pattern on it. Um, some of you guys may know what this is. Some of you guys may not. And what this is is a focusing aid. And I'm about to use that right now. All you do is slip it on the front of the dew shield just like that and then you take a about 5 to 10 second exposure on a bright star and it should come up with a diffraction pattern. I'll post up an image right here and what that is is you want the center spike directly in between the two outward spikes when that spike is centered it means you have perfect focus on that star which means you'll have perfect focus on any star or any object out in the night sky so i'm going to go ahead and get that focused with the batten off mask and then start my imaging routine through nina